Hi everybody, happy Tuesday. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Panini Score Football. Four box random division break number five. All card ship, a lot of great stuff here. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. There are the divisions right there. Let's roll it, randomize names and divisions two and a four, six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So after six times, we got Chris down to Adam. What's up, Gilo? Yeah, the Yankees are looking pretty good. Two and a four, six times for the divisions. One, two, three, four, five, and six. After six times, there's six right there. After six times, we've got the NFC South down to the NFC North. All right, so Chris with the NFC South, David with the NFC West, Karen with the AFC West, Bill with the NFC East, Chris with the AFC East, Chris with the AFC South, David with the AFC North, and Adam with Last Spot Mojo, NFC North. So let's sort by division. And when we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades, and then we'll have the four box break. So stick around, BRB. All right, welcome back, everybody. No deals were done, so those divisions remain the same. On a Tuesday, a Chew Tuesday, random division break number five. Thanks for getting in, everybody. Good luck. Remember, I marked those uh, score boxes with an X right there on Matthew Safford's number, just so you know they're all from the same case. Let's actually stack this over there and make myself a little room here. All right, and good luck. Only four boxes, but a lot of cards per uh, per box. This will take a minute or two, but hang in there. Our the next four box break is um, the last four box that we have for group breaks. So we're looking for the hobby exclusive ultra rare intergalactic insert. I'm, I'm assuming that'll stand out. And we've got four autographs per box on average. Let me get a, get a visual on here. 2022 score football intergalactic. Oh, it says intergalactic on it, so it'll be pretty obvious if there is one in here. They say it's ultra rare. Let's see how ultra rare it is. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we got some baseball on in the background. The Yankees leading Cleveland 5-1, bottom of the eighth, and they just put a runner on. Week six in the books. Let's take a quick glance at the standing while I rip open these packs. The Bills are 5-1, and one. the Jets 4-2 and two on a three-game winning streak. That defense looks like it's really coming together. I mean, that was supposed to be Robert Sala's calling card, right? To improve that defense, and they have. So they're on a three-game winning streak here. Dolphins are 3-3. Three and three. Patriots are 3-3, three and three, although Dolphins might get Tua back. Patriots might get, uh, you know, might have something in Bailey Zappi. AFC North, a little weird here. Your your division leaders are the Ravens and Bengals at at a at three and three. Browns and Steelers are two and four. Browns going backwards. They're on a three game losing streak. Titans are three and two on a three game winning streak. Colts are also Colts are three two and one. Jaguars are two and four, and the Texans are one three and one. I don't know what I would call this material. I think if we make a black mat out of this. I don't know what this material is. Or a gray mat. Yeah. Sometimes the colors get a little weird because it tries to compensate for the black. Yeah. But I like that I like that material though. Like yeah, a like pla that. plastic material? Is it too slippery though? Or is it just right? Yeah. 
Right, Adam's Adam, a Jets guy, was just like, it's been a while since I've heard, uh, if the season ended today, dot, dot, dot. All right, we'll look at the other divisions in just a sec. Let's go through these. So all cards will ship, so if there's any variations or anything I miss, um, don't worry, it'll still get to you. I mean, is Brees Hall getting some Rookie of the Year consideration? And we'll do a left, center, right randomizer for all of those cards. And there's a Kenny Pickett die cut. Nice. Six out of ten. That's pretty cool. That'll be for the AFC North, Chris Maxwell. Who will play if he's out of concussion protocol. If he's still in concussion protocol, then I think... Obviously, it'll be a start for another start for uh, Mitchell Trubisky. Right. Gilo still iffy about the Jets. I think that Jets defense is uh, is for real though. If they keep evolving and improving on a week to week basis, you know you don't have to rely too much on a young offense to get things going. But yeah, as of now, Brees Hall currently a favorite for Offensive Rookie of the Year, and Sauce Gardner favorite for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Adam and the chat, I, I don't know this answer, but maybe someone can figure this out. When is the last time a team has had both the Offensive and Defensive Rookie of the Year? Those gray borders are parallels, but they are not numbered, just FYI. Or has that ever happened? And we've got a Christian Watson rookie autograph for the NFC North. That's Adam Kupperman on the board early. Oh, was it the Saints with Camara and a corner? Maybe a, a, a Lattimore, perhaps? Was he originally a Saint? Four, that's a numbered card, so we're going to randomize this separately. Where does Cam Akers end up? It looks like he's out of favor with the Rams or unhappy with the Rams or maybe the feeling's mutual. He might get a fresh start somewhere else. Every time I flip these around, I'm going to go this way. And there's Travis Etienne Jr. autograph, 29 out of 50. That's for the AFC South, Jaguars. Chris. And there's a Desmond Ritter, 10 out of 20. Also for the, uh, no, for the NFC South this time. That's also for Chris. He has both Souths, AFC and NFC. Now, I feel like uh, I feel like offensive player of the year voters are in love with uh, giving it to quarter, but giving that award to quarterbacks. Although Jamar Chase got it last year, um, so I wonder if uh, if Bailey Zappi goes on a run. Now, when's the last time it happened before Camara and Lattimore? I guess I'm. I guess what I'm trying to figure out is 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 this more common than we think, or is it not? There's Cooper Cup to 100.
Ooh, Adam may have had a little uh, dollar dollar play on a Brees and uh, and a sauce parlay before the season. Now, what what were uh, what were the odds on on that? There's DeAndre Hopkins. He's coming back this week, and there's Leo Chanel, 34 out of 35. For the AFC West, that goes to Karen in the AFC West. Gilo is a Chiefs fan. Tell us about Leo Chanel, linebacker for your Chiefs. Channel? 120 to 1. That's not bad. There's Bailey Zappi, who's hobby hot at the moment. That goes to Chris and the AFC East. There's Kenny Pickett for the AFC North. David. Let's try to find some some uh, numbered cards for those guys, or maybe autos, would be pretty cool. Yeah, Damian Pierce could get some uh, some offensive player, offensive rookie of the year consideration. Haven't seen too much of him, but seems decent. Got it. George Pickens at one point was was tapped to be a possible offensive rookie of the year guy. Adam also has a ten cent play combining those two with Robert Sala for coach of the year and Carl Lost for comeback player of the year. But yeah, say it looks like Saquon Barkley should most definitely Especially if he keeps it up, we'll probably win Comeback Player of the Year pretty easily. Wow, Chiefs mysteriously made cap space today. Could be in the hunt for somebody. And that 10 cent play could be <laughs> thousands for a 10 cent play. Hey, for 10 cents, why not? And we've got a franchise numbers autograph, Amon Green, on card autograph. Nice one. NFC North, Adam. With the Amon Green. On week 16, 2003, in the fourth quarter, had a 98 yard touchdown run, the longest in the Packers' illustrious history. But that's not all, as that rush was part of a 218 yard day which still stands as the franchise's single game mark. All right, that was box one. Box two. Where do we leave off? I think AFC North, right? AFC South. We talked about it, right? Yeah, Titans are three, have won three in a row. Jaguars have lost three in a row. Titans are leading that division with a 3 2 record, then Colts 3 2 and 1. Jacksonville 2 and 4. Houston 1 3 and 1. In my AFC West, what's up, J Dog? What's going on? The G Lo's Chiefs are 4 and 2, and the Chargers are 4 and 2. They're on a three game winning streak. But their point differential is only minus, they're minus 11. So in spite of the wins, they're a little down there. Chiefs point differential is plus 30. They're doing, they're doing just fine in spite of the recent loss. Uh, Broncos are two and four. My Raiders one and four. They're coming off a bye. Let's see how they do coming out of the bye. Their schedule is a little, a little bit easier. But they've got to start turning things around pretty much right now. I was rooting for the tie yesterday between the Char Chargers and Broncos. I, was, I thought it was going to be possible once they got to overtime. But. In the NFC East, Eagles undefeated 6-0. Giants are surprisingly 5-1. New York must be really happy. They got the Yankees. Probably moving on to the ALCS. I think they're two outs away. 
They've got both of their NFL teams looking really good. Well, what else? Hockey season? Rangers coming off a nice season last year. You know, hope springs eternal with the with the Knicks. Brooklyn Nets are supposed to be pretty good, so it'll be a nice year for New York sports. So that ten cent parlay that Adam was talking about could pay would pay twenty one thousand dollars. It's not bad for ten cents. So Gilo was saying earlier that the Chiefs made some cap space. Who do you think they're going to go for? Who do you think your Chiefs would like to add? I mean, I feel like I feel like you always want to add defense, but I don't know what kind of defense is available. What about the uh, what about the Christian McCaffrey sweepstakes? Who's going to win that? I mean, I feel like I feel like almost every team has been could be connected with with uh, Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey to the Chiefs. I mean, Clyde edwards helaire and Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield. And op opens up this guy. I mean, that that just opens up everything. That. In an Andy Reid offense, I mean, he would have a field day with that. I mean, Christian McCaffrey could be a oh uh, a receiver, a pass catcher. There's Wesley Walls for Carolina. That's for the NFC South. That'll be for Chris. That's the other team that I've been hearing Christian McCaffrey being linked to the Buffalo Bills. which would make that team terrifying. I mean, they've been able to kind of, they've been able to sort of operate without a traditional sort of running back setting things up because, you know, Josh Allen can kind of use his legs like that, but I mean, that, could, that could make that team ridiculously balanced and really good. Earl Campbell autograph, yes. So Oilers stuff will go to the Texans in a group break. So that'll be AFC South. Chris. And there's Malik Willis also for the AFC South rookie quarterback. Odell Beckham Jr. That scares you though. I mean, if he's healthy, he could be pretty productive. Enough of a reputation to uh, enough of a reputation to draw some attention, and there it is. It's a final. The Yankees advance to uh, to the ALCS to face the Astros. There's Nico Collins. Who has the better record? Who's gonna Who's gonna be hosting? Are the Yankees gonna be hosting? Do they have home field advantage? I forget. Is Nico Collins also for the AFC South, Chris? And here's another Bailey Zappi. For the AFC East, Chris. And a Kenny Pickett for the AFC North, that's for David. And another numbered triple here, 22 out of 35. And it'll be another separate list.
There's a blue CD lamb, 45 out of 100 for the NFC East. It's for Bill. stack right here and then we'll be halfway through this break. Adam's saying that the NFL draft inserts looks like the cards they gave out at the draft. It could be. Sometimes I feel like those NFL draft cards, like the ones they produce for score might be on a slightly thicker card stock, while the ones they give away are like on a slightly thinner card stock. There's Devontae Price, 36 out of 50, where they, whatever material they use is a little different. Uh, that's Devontae Price, AFC South, Colts, Chris with the Colts. Yeah, I guess I, I, I guess the, those teams are doing the little, uh, little rock the baby thing going on there. I'm not sure what that's all about. I'm assuming they're, they're putting the other team to sleep. Next box. NFC North, J Dogs uh, Vikings, five and one on a four game winning streak. They might win that division. When's the last time the Vikings won that division? It's usually been a Packers division for very long, but the Packers are a, a, a pedestrian three and three. Bears are two and four, Lions are one and four. Ah, gotcha. So the Guardian, one of the Guardians players did the Rock the Baby on a home run trot. So now the Yankees have fired back. In the NFC South, nothing too exciting in the NFC South. Buccaneers are three and three, Falcons are three and three. Saints are still in the mix at two and four. Panthers are one and five. Got the coach fired. Got a, what, a defensive coordinator fired, and looks like they're gonna. They traded Robbie Anderson to the Cardinals after an on-field argument, a sideline argument, and then looks like they're shopping around. Run CMC, Christian McCaffrey, if they can find the right. If they can find the right trade partner. NFC West also sort of. No, no real separation there. Niners are three and three. Rams are three and three. Seahawks are three and three. Cardinals are two and four. And there's, there's Robbie Anderson. What's Robbie Anderson's fantasy stock in Arizona? Looks like they're going to be without Marquise Brown for a little while, but they are getting DeAndre Hopkins back. To Robbie Anderson, I'm sure Kyler Murray is still a is an upgrade is an upgrade quarterback wise so I don't know there might be a, might see a little uptick in fantasy action for Robbie Anderson Chase Claypool start to play a little bit better might be on some waiver wires and some points. Winner take all on these points. We'll do another randomizer. A lot of randomizers at the end here. Melvin Gordon could be could be a trade trade deadline. When is the trade NFL trading deadline? The problem with Melvin Gordon is that ball security sometimes is an issue for him. So I think that always that always ends up getting him in trouble. There's Kayvon Thibodeau. 
36 out of 50. I think he's probably one of the reasons why the, uh, why the Giants are having the success they have. I mean, he could probably be in the mix for defensive rookie of the year as well. And a Bailey Zappi autograph. It's a nice time to get this. 40 out of 50. Good timing. 2022 score football. Chris Maxwell and the AFC East. And the last couple weeks or so, his value has, has, uh, has jumped considerably. And with Mac Jones' high ankle strain, he might be getting a lot more starts. And as long as he's playing well, there's really no rush to rush Mac Jones back into action. I think Hackett might have some disconnect with some players. He also has made possibly a disconnect with clock management early on in the season. Yeah, it's not been a good start for the uh, for the Broncos. I think they certainly expected a much better better start at this stage of the season than than the uh, two and four record they have. Thank you, Hilton, 81 out of 100. Another Desmond River for the NFC South. I'm looking for Chris. Crosby and we've got a Cade Otten going to the Buccaneers NFC South Chris Maxwell Silver Hammer Rex just woke up saw the Yankees actually pulled it off Rex is saying this, this Yankees Astro series could be ugly. Could be. Who has who has a who has home advantage, home field advantage? Is it the do the Yankees have a better record than the Astros? <laughs> I think once uh, once that game was going back to New York, though Rex, I think I think it was uh, I think it was seemed like it was uh, the Yankees with that momentum, and then once they scored early, that's all she wrote. Dylan, Jason Jaspie's looking for you on Instagram. You're up for hit packs if you're in this chat. Go to the Instagram chat at Jaspie's Breaks. TJ Hawkinson. There you go. Lions, NFC North. That'll be for Adam and the North. I got him on my fantasy team, putting together some good weeks here and there. That's all I all I need out of that spot. There's Evan Neal to 100 for the NFC East for Bill.
All right, last box coming up. Uh, let's look ahead. Let's look ahead to this week's week seven. My gosh, we're in week seven already. Let's look, look ahead to this week seven matchups here. Outside of your uh, outside of your own team that you support, uh, what are some interesting uh, what are some interesting matchups here? Thursday night, New Orleans at Arizona. I think Andy Dalton might get another start. I guess that's. I mean, I, is Chris Olave healthy? Maybe we'll see. That's good good prime time way to see Chris Olave. DeAndre Hopkins is coming back. For Arizona, Robbie Anderson on that team. Went from a cat into a bird. I'm not sure if that moves the needle for the nat for our national audience here. Early games on Sunday, Atlanta at Cincinnati. I guess Mariota's been playing kind of well. It'd be interesting to see Mariota and Joe Burrow face off against each other. I feel like Olavi said he will be playing, says Gilo. According to Gilo, who talked to Olave earlier today, he's our NFL insider. Uh, I like seeing Mariota versus Joe Burrow. Detroit at Dallas. I mean, I don't know, that doesn't really move the needle for me. Colts at Tennessee. I guess for AFC South fan, it's a it's a good divisional matchup, but for the cat for uh, outside of them, outside of that, for neutrals. I was gonna say casuals. That's not the right word. But for neutrals, I don't know if that. You know, Green Bay at Washington. Aaron Rodgers versus Tyler Heineke. Cleveland at Baltimore. That's actually kind of Cleveland at Baltimore is actually kind of interesting because uh, Cleveland's two and four, and the Ravens aren't that much better at three and three. So that's actually kind of a kind of a turn, turns out to be a big game for Baltimore and the Browns. In a game maybe at the beginning of the season, if you looked ahead to this Week Seven matchup between the Browns and Baltimore, you'll be like, well, you know, Baltimore's probably going to be in cruise, cruise control and should easily take care of business. But that might not be the case. It's actually a big matchup. I, I know Baltimore has been a little unlucky in some games, but now this becomes a big divisional matchup here. Mike Tower said it would be interesting during postgame. Let's see. A Jaspies logo on a microphone holder, yeah. That would be nice. Maybe uh, when we start growing, evolving from group breaks to uh, to a media empire, could be possible. There's hot rookies, six out of fifty. Chris Olave, little a uh, little soft on that corner right there, NFC South, but that'll still be on its way to you, Chris. Top loaders tipping over easy. Top loaders. We got uh, New York at Denver. These are the afternoon games, or the late games. Afternoon for me. I think all the games are afternoon for, you, for East Coasters. But for the late games, Jets at Denver. Um, I mean, with the way Denver has been playing, I could see, I mean, you're taking the under on this game, right? Denver can't score, but their defense is decent. Jets' defense has been looking better and better with each each week that goes by. They seem to be getting into a really good groove. Although they can pop off for some points too. Throughout the week, we'll take a look at all the uh, all the spreads and all that stuff. We'll take a deeper dive into it. Just just taking a quick glance.
got Houston at Vegas. My Raiders coming off a bye. That's that's going to be a key a key game for the Raiders. They got it. I mean, I know the chances are still slim, but they want even a small chance at possibly making the playoffs. There's Khalil Shakir for the for uh, for Buffalo. Goes to the AFC East, Chris. They got to win that game. That's that's, that's uh, I mean, I guess they're all must-win games for every week's a must-win game, right? But a must-must-win game. They got to start the post-buy uh, part of the schedule on a uh, on a hot note. They could set the tone there. Then they can make things interesting down the stretch. You know what? With my Raiders being one and four, that's all I want. Let's let's make things interesting. Seattle at. Um, Seattle's at the Chargers. I mean, the, the Seattle's actually looking kind of good. I wonder if that's going to be more of an exciting matchup than we may think. And we got, speaking of the Chiefs, that was the next game I was going to talk about. Good timing. Derek Johnson. Franchise numbers autograph for... Kansas City, AFC West, Karen with the AFC West. When Johnson made a beeline toward a ball carrier, chances are his target wasn't going to get away. The four-time Pro Bowler uh, selection recorded 9 941 of his 955 career solo tackles with Kansas City, tops in franchise history. He also holds a club record with 213 career assisted tackles. Yeah, this guy was pretty good. Chiefs at San Francisco. Gilo's, yeah, I know I'm being an obnoxious Chiefs fan, but hey, yeah, a little Super Bowl rematch. It's J.D. McKissick to 100. Yeah, that could, that's a good that's a good matchup. That's the that's a, the Seattle Chargers game and the Chiefs Niners game are the uh, are the later of the late games. Then your Sunday night matchup, uh, Pittsburgh at Miami, which could be interesting if we have, if Tua is back, and if Kenny Pickett is playing, that could be a little battle between a couple, uh, couple young QBs. Miami will be looking to kind of get their season back on track. Because, I mean, when healthy, Tua has been looking pretty good. Some fun comebacks. They were fun to watch. There we go. There's Kenny Pickett. Bailey Zappi's not too far behind him in all of these breaks, at least in these boxes, these current boxes. I don't know if that's always the pattern. And your Monday night game, Chicago at New England. I'm not sure if that's going to be a very good game. Although, I think a lot of eyeballs will be on the game, at least at least if you're in the hobby. If you have some uh, if you have some uh, a, a position on Bailey Zappi, that'd be a fun game to watch Bailey Zappi operate in prime time. And let's see if Justin Fields and the Bears can make it to make some things interesting. There's Nico Collins, Texans, AFC South, Chris. On a bye, Buffalo is on a bye. The Bills are on a bye. Rams on a bye. Vikings on a bye. Eagles on a bye. And there's Zach Wilson, 32 out of 35 for the AFC East. That's for Chris. There's a Matt Ryan autograph for the NFC South. This is still Falcons edition. Going to Chris in the NFC South. Victor saying Zappi is not better than Fields. I don't know. I don't know if the numbers show that, though. Well, let's just say Zappi's on a better team than Fields. 
and uh, that makes Zappy look better than Justin. All right, let's do some randomizers here. Looks like we've got four different randomizers to do, and then I'll do a couple. Uh, then I'll do a quick little recap. So the first one will be. left, center, right randomizer. Let's flip back over here. So we got dice, left, center, right randomizer. Then the points will be the second one. The third one are the numbered cards. There was one with Dallas, Dallas, Buffalo, Tampa Bay. That's uh, CD Lamb, Josh Allen, Leonard Fournette. And the other one was Cooper Cup. Lamar Jackson, Baltimore, and Derrick Henry, Tennessee. Uh, names on top or teams on top will get those cards. Let's roll it, randomize it. Six and a two, eight times. Eight times for those left, center, right cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. After eight, goes to the center. So the non-numbered cards, the center cards, we'll get those. Uh, the points, six and a two, eight times. Name on top after eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and final time. After eight, Chris, 400 points going your way. Eight times for the Dallas Buffalo Tampa Bay one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Goes to Tampa Bay. So the NFC South, Chris, will get the uh, Fantasy Stars triple, four out of 35. Next one, once again, six and a two, eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. After eight times, goes to Tennessee. That's AFC South, and that's also for Chris. This one is 22 out of 35. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Here is your autograph recap. We had a lot of numbered cards as well. Thanks everyone for getting in, really appreciate it. Nice Earl Campbell, Amon Green, Desmond Ritter to 20, Etienne Jr., Kenny Pickett die cut to 10, and a Bailey Zappi, 40 out of 50. Nice time to get him hobby hot at the moment. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for doing the score break. We got another four boxes in the store right now, another division break. Those are the final four boxes. We don't have any others, uh, any other score to post as division breaks. Personal breaks on Instagram may have some, but for our group breaks, that is it for the time being. So go and get it, jazpiececasebreaks.com. Let's finish off the case. Bye-bye.